their system. It just doesn't. All right, we're going to uh, try to see if we can get um, a phone connection. Is Jan ready? On video? Oh, very good. All right. Our next guest comes from, from the 206. He is uh, the uh, Renaissance man of the Jeff Santos show. He is MTC. Mark Taylor Canfield says hello. Mark, great to have you back. <laughs> On the Jeff Santos show. There you go. Ain't no place to go. So listen all day. It's the best way we got the Jeff Santos show. The Jeff Santos show. Oh yeah. Well, everybody should know about that Jeff Santos show. Amen, brother. MTC in the house. Yes, sir. For you, Jeff. Oh, thank you, you know man. What? That sounds great. We're gonna we're gonna have to tape that, Josh, and uh, maybe that becomes part of the new intro uh, for the show. <laughs> I Here can do go. it again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You hey, can. Like you can. Look, we're having a great you know day in Seattle. It's one hundred percent rain. So shh, don't tell. Well, yeah, I tell everybody, <laughs> rains all the time here, even in the spring. We have a really cold spring. So yeah. I was out in a hot boat. With two beautiful women, you know, having a great time about two and a half weeks ago. And ever since then, it feels like Boston. It's just cold, windy, yes. rain, yeah. no fun. You get that. But yeah, March and April is not happening. fun. A good thing is happening. So I just registered for uh, a major conference coming up on May 3rd on World Press Freedom Day, as designated by the UN. And there are going to be major events at the UN in, in New York City. But there's also going to be one that uh, is sponsored by Reporters Without Borders, and they're gonna release Great. their new World Press Freedom Index rankings. And I'm afraid, ladies and gentlemen, the United States ranking is probably gonna continue going down again, considering what's coming out of Fox News in terms of misinformation. So as far as press freedom, I mean, you have to have a press that actually tells you the truth, number one. Uh, yeah. So, so Anthony Blinken is gonna be a part of that. So I'm so wow. happy, even though I've had, I've had, sorry, I had to do that with my camera sometimes, or it freaks out, but I, um, I had no luck, you know, dealing with a lot of major media and trying to get them to cover the fact that our ranking has been dropping on the World Press Freedom Index since 2002 when we were 17. Now we're 42nd behind the Summit for Democracy Partners, uh, Costa Rica, the Netherlands, and uh, Zamb Zambia. So, you know, we should be embarrassed as U.S. journalists, but no one will report on the story. But at least yeah. and, uh, Anthony Blinken will be there, the U.S. Secretary of State. So at least one major public official will have to deal with the fact that we're probably going to drop again, and he'll have to address it. I hope he does. Yes. I mean, it seems and I like hope you get a chance to ask him that authority. question. You know, I want to I want to get you I here hope. because you you've been talking about the the issue of of media um, and 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 what mainstream media does and doesn't do and the protection of journalists. I was really disappointed with Leslie Stahl giving the platform to uh, to the likes. Of, um, of Miss Green there, Marjorie Taylor Green, uh, you know she is a lunatic, and you know when you have uh, a platform as great uh, as 60 Minutes has been for what almost 50 years, if not more, um, this yeah over 50 years, this to me is a disgrace, and you know, and what we had what we saw in the coverage leaning up to Donald Trump's, um, you know arrest in, in New York City, the live coverage. I mean, I got to know the familiarity of the FDR uh, highway in, uh, in in Manhattan and, you know, on all the, the different uh, uh, spots that planes, uh, you know, uh, you know, um, go into, towed into or, um, you know, arrive in the in the tarmacs there. I mean, it's ridiculous. I mean, 24 seven coverage of arrival of, of of basically what will end up being a criminal the former president of the United States. I mean, it's just, you know, when when the things that are going on right now, you know, that finally CNN and MSNBC are covering here, this outrageous effort to expel members of the Tennessee state legislature, you know, finally they're, they're doing the right thing. And then I've seen, we'll see what the Democratic Party nationally is on this. But I, I just think it's so much in the news lately, man, and, and how media has covered it. And, you know, that goes right to your concern is that the United States, you know, has a lot of problems in how the media 
Well, I mean, you know, we, we've talked about it many times. I mean, why is it that the progressive voices have very little airtime? You know, I can tell you oh, why. Yeah. So, we, yeah, there's many reasons for that, including the FCC, which keeps allowing corporate media ownership consolidation, which leads to market yep. monopolies. Another reason yep. why the U.S. is slipping because we have corporate controlled media, not state controlled media. But, you know, well, you know, that's one of the reasons I went out and got this, Jeff. Look, check, look this is so beautiful. <laughs> Yes, I feel like I'm in the Renaissance whenever I play this. I saw Hart playing one of these on one of the the covers of their albums, like Little Queen or something. I thought I gotta get one, but it's a oval back uh, mandolin, That's and it's very, very cool. Renaissance. Yeah. It's very beautiful. It's got the little yes. We're gonna have to get you like you know one of those uh, TV shows, The Crown or whatever, on Netflix, uh, and uh, <laughs> you know you know you could you could you could be an actor in one of those uh, one of those. Uh, dramas um i want to i want to ask you a little bit um about you know one of the one of the interesting things here is msnbc is using a number of african-american journalists to cover this situation in nashville um and you know i'm i'm really happy with that because uh, the other night on the local chicago feed on the brandon johnson victory i saw uh, brandon johnson of course is an african-american now the the, the uh, mayor elect of chicago they send two white journalists um, who were dumbfounded that Johnson actually won so much of, for an object, objective. And then they were dumbfounded that the AP had called the race when there were still some outstanding votes. And I'm like, here are two, you know, TV anchors who look like they've been there for, you know, 30 years. I mean, they weren't, you know, in their 20s. You know, having the audacity to say the AP, which is the gold standard, you know, for calling races and so forth, that uh, they had to hold off. I'm like, you know, what's going yeah, on well, here? They, and this is, again, they, CBS. They couldn't handle they, it, know. Jeff. They yeah. couldn't handle it. The, the corporate media has its own agenda, and it doesn't involve Brandon Johnson. It doesn't involve Bernie Sanders, and it doesn't involve, right. uh, you know, Kshama Sawant. By the way, tomorrow right. the city council, uh, I've been asked to speak about uh, a new law that they're trying to pass to keep the landlords from jacking up people's late fees. And, was, you know, if you can't pay your rent, obviously you can't pay a late fee as well. And some of the late fees get really extraordinary, you know, extraordinary high here. So she's trying to limit it to like, you know, ten dollars a month or something like that, so that the the landlords also can't use it for a reason to evict people. But yeah, I think um, the media is not ready for this stuff. Remember when uh, we, we had a certain MSNBC commentator have a meltdown because Bernie Sanders won the California primary right. during the 2016. <laughs> His initials are you know, CM. Yes. Lady. <laughs> he couldn't handle it. They couldn't handle it. the the corporate media was saying that this must be a mistake. And that's kind of how they acted yes. with Anna Johnson. I mean, they're not comfortable with progressives, unfortunately, Jeff. I wish they were. I wish they were more comfortable with me, you know, but I guess, you know, I dress in black and play rock and roll. So that probably frightens them, too. But yes, yes. I think we need more people like me in the media and more people like my friends here in Seattle, who some of them are very eccentric characters, you know, and might have a lot of tattoos and, you know, play rock with, and roll away. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's you know, the, look, that's the way that a lot of people live in artistic communities around the country, and it's becoming more and more normal, I think, for younger people to express themselves, whether it's their gender identification or, you know, their artistic skills or whatever. It's really important for people to express themselves. And unfortunately, corporate media is a lot of times about the three thousand uh, dollar suit Armani suits and the five hundred dollar haircuts than it is about what they're reporting. The corporate media has its own agenda. There's only certain things that they're gonna report. They won't report that we're listed 42nd on the World Press Freedom Index. I'm really wondering, Jeff, how our US Secretary of State is gonna handle that issue. I have already submitted my questions, by the way. So, you know, he, he will see this or they will see it at least, you know. So they'll have a chance to answer, how do we get US media to cover the lack of press freedom here, which no one seems to know about, including most members of Congress. By the way, I am meeting with Pramila Jayapal and, and her staff uh, within the next week to talk about this stuff. So it's good. At least one member of Congress, along with Jamie Raskin, who tried to pass the um, shield law protecting journalists from having to be you know, prosecuted for fa failing or refusing to reveal their anonymous sources. By the way, um, DeSantos down there in Florida, amongst no, other No, no, hold things, on. DeSantis. Make sure you say that correctly. Oh, did I say that? Kiss. I am so sorry. Yes, you did. Just yes, you did. Okay. I, I, you're not the only one. I have to correct my some of my uh, my my guests on that. The Santis. Bad. Okay. It's bad enough. We got a I we see. got a fraud, you know, that operates in in New York as a congressman with my name, full name, 
Never mind this guy trying to. Uh, Thank goodness to nobody's him. named Mark Taylor Canfield but me. I'm so happy. <laughs> so I feel sorry yeah. for all my friends who have to You're do with other people one. with that name. Although I have five friends named Mark, so we all have to have nicknames. Otherwise, yeah, we do get blamed for each other's misdeeds and things. You know, like, did you hear what Mark did? Or like, well, which one? We were at the studio once. We, I wrote a cartoon because there, we were at the studio once. There were five of us there, and four of us were Marks. So somebody called on the phone, and his name happened to be Mark, and he asked, is Mark there? So we all just kind of looked at each other like, uh, who wants to take this one? But yeah, there's Sir Mark and Purple Mark, and then MTC is what people call me. But as far as my last name, nobody seems to to have that anywhere. But it hasn't helped, you know, uh, me convince corporate media to report about press freedom issues, or you know, not only the media monopolies, but also just the how many newsrooms have been closed since 2020. Like Reporters with Border Without Border says over a hundred local uh, newsrooms. That's those are newspapers. If it wasn't radios, for the print. Uh, outlets like uh, the Prospect and the Nation and uh, our good friends at the Hill uh, and of course Herb Boyd over the Amsterdam News, I forget to mention him earlier. You know, I mean, if it wasn't for these great journalists, you know, print journalists, you know, we would be in real, real major issues in this country. I mean, you know, the, the fact, again, I'll give credit where it's due with both MSNBC and CNN. They're all over what is happening today in Nashville. Thank God, because that fascist Tennessee state legislature, and they should be called out. And I want to know where Biden is. I know that if JFK was seeing what was happening in the 1960s, you know, he went on national TV to talk about the civil rights concerns. You know, I know that LBJ did the same thing. You know, we should be out there talking about what this means, you know, to the average American. But yet we see more and more TV slash radio silence you know, from leaders in Washington. I noticed that Barbara Lee was on there. You know, she wasn't as forceful as I would like, but at the very least, you get somebody from Washington. And this is something to me more... that is, is the dividing line between fascism and democracy. Yeah, that seems to be go. going on in certain, yeah, it seems to be happening in several places in this country right now. I'm really shocked. You know, I wrote an April Fool's uh, day satire about the summit for democracy for the Seattle Star, and I made fun of the fact that you know in my story Winnie all the Winnie the Pooh books had been banned by Ron DeSantis and the Florida State Legislature for being so woke, too woke, right? Uh, Christopher yeah, Robin yeah. and Winnie the Pooh and Piglet. So I mean that was my joke, just saying how far it's gone. But you know some of my European friends were saying, Mark, that's not far from the truth. I mean I mentioned a lot of things in that article that are true about threats to democracy in this country and especially to freedom of the press, which is where, where my head is at a lot. But you know, in general, Jeff, I think we need a younger person running for president. We need a, a Kennedy kind of person. We need somebody who's young, has got a lot of energy, can bring other young people out to vote. Cause you know, if the young folks vote during the next major election, then the Democrats will probably win. But if the right wingers take away their, you know, ability to vote with a student ID like they've done in Idaho, that's another story that, you know, I've been, and following or you know if they're trying don't by the way folks don't trust people who try to limit your ability to vote there's something fishy exactly there, okay that's not that's yes. called undemocratic okay yeah, they have their own so. agenda. by the way just they're to make it clear uh there are people named kennedy one is a conservative congressman uh, another loony bin from uh, louisiana named john kennedy and robert kennedy and is now an anti-vaxxer he's decided just to run for president so you know, the, the, the Kennedy oh, names of the, that, uh, yes, yes. That just has happened that, over the last hey, 24 I hours. To him, I used to hear him on, um, the, uh, ring of fire and he was great. Yeah. So the ring of know. fire. Exactly. You know, I, I yeah. you know, Sam Cedar and all those guys, uh, fantastic. And he's been always an anti-vaxxer, but with this whole thing, with the pandemic, it's become even more problematic. And so I guess that's going to be a centerpiece of his campaign. He obviously has some other issues, wow. but um that he's going to so, hopefully yeah. talk about but he's very yeah smart so i mean man. yeah i mean yeah yeah sure. well yeah. And, and a lot of amazing experience seeing you know what can happen in this country so i'm sure he has i mean his father and French father and uh and uncle you mean robert kennedy oh, robert kennedy jr yeah yeah robert no kennedy it's jr., uh yeah. it, the it's, famous it's really, really yeah that's oh, jfk jr yeah 
that's the famous salute right, at the, that was during uh, the that Matthews was during the Washington DC event. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Right. Wow. The funeral all these of, memories uh, are back of things I've seen all my life about this family. Yeah. You know, you're yeah, no, I mean sure. I you know, I mean look, you I mean there's uh, JFK time. JFK behind me there, you know, behind me in the uh in the screenshot there. I wanted to ask um, you about and um if you, if you don't mind, I wanted to ask you about your action figures back there because you talked about Racer X, <laughs> but I'm curious about the yes, baseball yes, players. Yes. I can't identify. Well, the them. Uh, the baseball players are Carlton Fisk and Pedro Martinez, uh, which are right right below me here. That's Pedro. Okay. And 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 then and, and that's you Carlton Fisk, people. who lost his hand okay. um, in the uh, in my moving from one place to another. Um, yeah. So uh, well, there you go. And. You and Actually lost his hand. That was fright. That was scary. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, no, the figure because okay. he get cut off over here. You hear that? You know, no, no, no. He's cool. he's so we good as far as I know. And living living well, and I guess he's in New Hampshire. I'm not sure. Grew up in New Hampshire. Um, you know, look, we got a couple of questions left here. A couple of minutes left here. I wanted to uh, run this by you because um, I think it's um, it's really great. You know that that Eddie Vedder and, and Pearl Jam have uh, really looked into the politics. And I, I'm hoping to hear more from them now. We're going to see what happens here. Again, a lot of young people, high school age, college age, in Nashville protesting. Um, and, um, you know, yeah. Eddie Vedder is a little bit, you know, is closer to your age, closer to my age and, and your age, I think. But, you know, still, yeah. you know, there are rock bands that the music, regardless of how old the actual artists are, resonate you know, with people who are, who are 25 or, or 21. And that to me is really important. And I'm hoping that they take this up. Um, you know, your quick thoughts as a musician, because to me, this is important um, that everybody kind of comes together here because when fascism raises its ugly head, you need to push back and, and it has to be a full court press in my view. I think Brandy Carlisle, our Grammy award winning singer uh, rock, kind of, folk rock singer here in Seattle has done a good job at be at standing up for uh, things that she really believes in, including a major, her and Dave Matthews headlined a major uh, rally against the National Rifle Association at one point, sponsored by like high school and college kids. So when I saw all those kids in Tennessee confronting their representatives and pol their political representatives, I was so proud of them. I'm thinking, yeah, that's what people need to do. They need to actually hold these people accountable for the decision. The media is not going to do it. Yeah, so exactly. It. It's, it's, somebody has to. Mark Taylor Canfield, thank you, my friend. Hopefully next time we'll get you on a little quicker and give you a little more time. Uh, appreciate you, my man. Have a good one. You too. Check him out on Have YouTube. You uh, thank you. All right, let's uh, thank uh, Josh and Jalen for producing this broadcast. Of course, the whole team down there in Boca Raton. Thank you, Freddie and company. Folks, tomorrow uh, we'll have our good friends John Shelton, uh, Alan Minsky, and Harvey Kay. And a surprise guest, Peter Abraham of the Globe on the Red Sox, who won today. Yay. Until tomorrow, my name is Jeff Santos, and right now it is my time to say I gotta go.